Hi guys, this is Ratchet Throw, and we are playing Criminal Case Elite Mode, Case 1, Bloodlust. Let's all our chapter 3 and, well, the crowd around Cemetery is going crazy because of, because of vampires, yes, yes. Oh no, we can't have the cops asking what we are doing, nosing around this murder. Gwen, Katrina, go to the cemetery immediately. You have to calm these people down or we'll have trouble. Alright, I'm going. Vampires! Vampires are real! We're all gonna die! A girl already died, they say. We could be next. Hey, hey, nobody's going to die. Look, it's true there's been an unfortunate incident tonight. It's being investigated. There's nothing supernatural about it. How do you know? And who the heck are you? You wanna know who we are? We are, uh... We're rational people. Like you. We all know that vampires don't exist. Right? I guess. We haven't actually seen any vampires. And you won't, because vampires aren't real. Now, let's all stop making a ruckus at the cemetery. It's disrespectful and nothing else. Oh, um, alright. Well, that worked. Pew, Katria, they're gone. You know, I always feel bad about lying to civilians about supernatural stuff. But you saw how panicked they were. And it was only a matter of time for someone to call the police. And then we'd be in hot water. Oof, good thing it did happen. Anyway, good point. We should check that the crowd hasn't trampled any remaining evidence of the murder. Let's look around. Okay. Well, let's investigate the cemetery again. Is that a tiny coffin with the victim's initials on it? We better unlock it to see what's inside. And that plush toy heart is so romantic. You're right, there's a note attached to it. Let's reveal what it's about. And while we're at it, let's also fix this torn up portrait. It looks vaguely like it's the victim on it. Yeah, looks like it. Let's get started, Katarina. At least one of these clues is bound to shed light on the murder. We can't let the killer vampire roam free. That's right. Okay, let's dust a note on this heart plushie. Maybe it's from the boyfriend. Stop selling me gifts, Eric. We are done. Oh. Katria, the note on that plush heart says, Stop sending me gifts, Eric. We're done. Hold on, Eric. That's our victim's boyfriend. Or, he said he was her boyfriend. Sounds like they are actually broken up. He lied to us, said about something as important as love. But of course, he could be lying about bigger things if he's the vampire we're after. One thing is clear. We must talk to Eric again. Yeah. All right, let's restore the portrait. That's the victim and was I mean, I mean in Tara, what does that mean? This portrait is of the victim, Katarina. Whoever will keep an oil painting on her, and why? It's got a board written on it. I'm an Intare. Let me look that up. Alright, what is it? Oh, I'm an Intare means threat in Romanian. 
Now we know one undead person for whom Romania is an ancestral land. Yep, Dr. Aculus. Also, Dr. Aculus would absolutely keep a portrait of his enemy instead of a photo. His craft of modern technology really isn't that great. Earlier, Dr. Aculus made it sound like he didn't even know the victim. He better explain what's going on here. Yeah. Alright, now let's unlock the mini coffin. What's this? Katariana, plot thickens. The tiny coffin with the victims is initial so it contains some white powder. Priya will tell us what the powder is and then maybe something will make sense. Yeah, what's, what's with the coffin? Alright, 24 hours. Let's go to Eric first. Ah, kind reporters, it's you again. Good of you to check on me, but my life is still not worth living without my love. Yeah, about that. Isn't it true that you two were no longer together? Ah, so you know the truth, Katarina. My humiliation is complete. Yes, despite the flames of devotion burning in my chest, Lucy spurned me. Like Byron says, I only know we loved in vain. I was ready to battle fate for her, to defy my family, to make every sacrifice, but she, she, she said she got bored with me. Bored of our epic love. By the end she looked at me as if I was something as awfully toxic as garlic. But you weren't ready to give up, were you? You sent her gifts even after she broken up with you. I knew that whatever she said, deep inside Lucy loved me. It was only a matter of time till I made her see it. I never quit trying. Oh man, you sound like every creepy boyfriend my friends have told me to ditch. I just hope you didn't escalate all the way to murder. Oh, but it could be you. Alright, let's go to Dr. Aculus now. Katarina. Young Gwendolyn, I was just reflecting on the nature of humanity. It is so beautiful and fragile. I to hear you broading about that, given our latest discoveries. In what way was Lucy Winters a threat to you? So it has come to this. I agree that any action of mine could bring your suspicion on me, my hunter friends. Here is the story. The young maiden somehow learned that we, vampires, were real. Her gaze penetrated the shadows in which we hide. Wait, how do you know she knew? No matter how I knew, it was enough that she found out. A human who divines our secret is a danger to us, for we do not wish to be seen. Convenient for you, then, that this danger was silenced. No, I already told you, this death benefits no one and imperils us vampires by bringing your keen eye on us. Violence breeds violence, my friends. Now, I shall leave you to seek the comfort of a restorative body, Mary. This night has left me wary. Oof, it's not going to be you. What's so it's a powder and a coffin? You know, Gwen, some days I miss working for a pharmaceutical company. I bet you miss the paychecks. Katarina, Priya was a high-flying Kevin before giving it up to chase after monsters and sleep in an RV like a hippie. It's true the lifestyle isn't the easiest to get used to, but it only meant that I miss my old state-of-the-art labs. Which would have been useful when I was checking out the powder you sent me. 
Why did it turn out to be Trixie? You could say that. I quickly identified that the powder was a drug of some sort, but narrowing it down took time. I managed it though. The stuff is euphoria, a party drug that's popular lately. Taking it gives you a hit of energy. But once you crash, you'll be weak and lethargic, which is, of course, dangerous since anyone could take advantage of you then. Great. Any idea of how our victim got mixed up with this drug? I would assume that she was given or sold some. And I could tell you who the distributor is. You see, Euphoria has been appearing at parties all along the west coast, and it's linked to Roxanne Vegas' name. Oh! Hold on, our shady potentially vamp lady was peddling drugs to the victim? We'll need a good long talk with her about that. Yeah. You've been selling drugs! Right? Change your mind about me tempting you for a drink, Katarina? Go on, it's on me. Uh, now I get it why you want me to drink. You want you want to drug me, right? B give me a drink and before that you put something in it. On you, like these drugs were. Or did you make Lucy pay for them? Drugs? Why are you asking me about drugs, Katarina? Is it also for that article you were writing? You never said what paper you worked for. You must have forgotten. Anyway, our research linked to you to the drugs and as such the girl who died tonight. So... Ah yes, that girl you're so interested in. I'll grant you she was a sad, ironic beauty, but she didn't look like she was enjoying the club very much. Rest assured, if I were to offer her drugs, which of course I didn't, it would only be to liven her up. And if I had provided her with the narcotics, I'd be sure to be there for the calm down, when she'd be so vulnerable and sweet. Way to sound like a predator. Predator? I'll take that as a compliment. I like sweet things. You can print that in your article. Just don't mention my garlic allergy. And if you want to keep a closer eye on me for your research, well, I'd only enjoy that. Oh my god, she's so not normal. Well, Katrina, Ritim had a busy life before a vamp ended it for her. Apparently she really has somehow learned that vampires were real. Even Dr. Aculus was convinced of it and didn't like it. With a supernatural excitement in her life, maybe it's not surprising that she found her boyfriend boring and ditched him. And she may have turned to party drugs, or maybe they were pushed on her by someone who wanted to take advantage of her. One of our suspects is a vampire who killed her, even if we don't yet know why, but the answers aren't far. Let's return to the place where we know the curious dumped evidence before, the stone giant. It's time to wrap up, wrap this up. That's right. So you knew the vampires were real. But why would then a vamp kill you? To silence you or was it was there something else? then sorry that she died and you put a candle there. Vamp. Katrina, that candle has blood on it and it totally looks like it was taken from the crime scene. Alright. Let's take a stop from this waxy clue and hope the curious left some traces on it. And good eye, something could have been thrown in that flower pot. We better look through it. Katria will close the inner our murderous vamp, and I won't like the stakes. <laughs> yeah. Ah, stakes, stakes. <laughs> Alright, let's look through the loose bush first. Oh! 
her necklace. She was wearing it. There we go. There was a necklace amid those roses, Katarina. And it matches the earrings the victim was wearing. You're right. Ben told us to be on the lookout for a necklace. This must be the one. Let's send it to him. Okay. That's right. Now the candle. Send this blood sound from the candle to Priya, Katarina, and waste no time in vain. I mean, vain. Yeah, I know. I know what you meant. Did the killer vamp leave something on the necklace? I have to ask, Katarina. Have you and Gwen stopped even for a moment in the investigation to take a nap or something? Night shifts are hard on the body. Well, we didn't. This is the time for naps, Ben. We are. None of you are taking care of yourselves on this team. Bad diet, no sleep, injuries, you name it. My hands are always full with you lot. Speaking of injuries, was this a necklace the vamp tore off the victim before chomping down on her? Ugh, fine, yes it was. Bits of the girl's skin are still on it. Also, there were leather fragments caught between the links in the necklace. The victim didn't wear any, so your killer must. Great, we are really getting somewhere. Our leather-clad killer van won't know what hit them. That's right. Alright, now the blood. No, mama, I haven't tried your curry recipe yet. Why? Well, um, I don't have time to cook, and... Oh, Mama, my co-workers are here. I have to go. Sorry about that, Katarina. My mom likes to check up on me often. Very often. Ugh, I know how it feels like. Hey, at least she cares. Yes, but it's awkward lying to my family about everything. They think I'm still at my pharma job. Russ, here I am, roaming around the country in campers with the rest of the team, solving supernatural crimes. Yeah, your family not knowing is tough. Listen, family aside, can we talk about the blood sample we sent you? Of course. Sorry, I know you're in a hurry. The blood matches your victim, but I thought all I got for you. There was a second set of DNA left in the sample, and it belongs to a man which you could be sure your killer is. So the vampire who killed our victim was a man? They'll have to face the consequences like one, two. That's right. All right, Katrina, let's go and mask the vamp who murdered Lucy Winters. Stakes at the ready. Right here. Do we have garlic as well? Well, we already know he's allergic to garlic, so... Well, you're not. DJ Blood is the vampire. So the blood name blood goes fits you well because you're a vamp. We got you. DJ Blood, we are guessing the blood in your name is literal because you're the vampire who killed Lucy Winters. Wow, you guys are suddenly scary looking. What's with the wooden stick? Don't pretend you don't know, blood. Do we need to spell it out for you? Your ruse is done. You may as well show us your fangs. Thanks. I don't have any. 
Why would I? But you? I guess you're not real reporters, are you? No, we are supernatural hunters and we are done with you and your evasions. We know you lured Lucy out to the cemetery at midnight with a note. And then you tore away her necklace and bit into her veins. You sucked her blood out like the monster you are. That girl was your fan and she trusted you. And you... And I could get no peace from her. You want the truth, Katarina? Fine. Here it is. I did bite her, but she asked to be turned. Oh, is that what this is about? And you showed us your face. So your real face comes out and she... What? Lucy wanted to become a vampire? Yes. Look, that, that day when the girl broke into my house like a crazy fan, she saw me drinking blood. She realized what I was. Ever since then, she'd been hounding me to turn her. She had this weird romantic idea about what vampire vampires are. Obviously, I said no. First thought, Dr. Atlas would have my head if I agreed. Secondly, she didn't know what she was getting into. Being a vamp is an old fun, man. Hunters everywhere, blood hard to get, and my music career suffers from me only ever playing gigs at night. I tried to explain to Lucy, it's not gonna happen. But the girl was like a broken record, tried to kill herself if I didn't do it. So what, you bit her out of the goodness of your heart? Well, yeah, I agreed to turn her. I explained to her that I'd need to drink a little of her blood, and then she'd have some of mine. Except, the more my tongue tasted her blood, it was heaven, Katarina. She was so tender, so sweet, I just... I kept sucking. Oh dear. My first time having fresh human blood in so long. I drained her dry, but I didn't mean to. I just couldn't stop. And that's exactly why you shouldn't have started in the first place. And I will take you to Dr. Aculus to decide your fate. Man. What is this, Katarina? Are you saying that this young fledgling is the one who committed the awful murder tonight? I didn't mean to, sire. Please believe me. The girl asked to be turned, and once I tasted her blood, I couldn't stop drinking. I warned you. I told you that you were rash and intemperate. You shouldn't have left my protection if you couldn't control yourself, William. My name isn't William anymore. It's DJ but I shot after that moniker. You always be William to me. A young vampire who rejects guidance when he most needs it. And now you have to pay the price. I'll send you to Europe to my ancestral castle. My keeper will house you in the dungeons. You can forget freedom for the next 50 years at least. You'll learn to control yourself. And no more of DJ blood or this distasteful music. No, you can't take my music from me. I'll serve out to 50 years, but I'll keep singing. Man. Katrina, congratulations on your first big supernatural investigation well wrapped up. Dr. Axis just met with me. All apologies about the awful conduct of his underling. Assures me it won't happen again. I don't know. I don't trust him. Is he, like, sincere? As sincere as vampires ever are, Dr. Aculus clearly wasn't happy we found the kill before he did. Likes minimal hunter involvement, that one. Well, I like minimal vampire involvement. And now that we are done with these bloodsuckers, how about we celebrate our victory, Katarina? Yes, let's celebrate. So you just couldn't stop drinking blood. Well, as Gwen said, you should have gone through it in the first place. Alright, we're gonna stop here, we're gonna continue playing in A Taste of Blood, number one. So, thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like to this video, and I'll see you again. Goodbye!